you can open your eyes. Your entire party is in the middle of an enormous library. Sunlight is streaming in through the windows, and there is just a horde of children. They're running around everywhere, all shapes and sizes. There are tieflings, there's a kobold running around, a gnome, a few small goblins. The halfling still looks on edge. In the middle of the library, there is an elf man, long flowing copper hair and copper skin. And the man gestures that you all should sit down and offers you all a drink. I just jump over everybody, like swoop, jump, and kind of just forcibly plant myself at a table, still heavy breathing. Um, I walk over to the table with Vanetta and hold a chair for her. I'll walk over to one of the NPCs, seats, passing on the drink and taking a seat. I'm not does sure he if I recognize it. He is royalty, or is he not that race of elf? So the two elves in the party roll wisdom. Uh, 19. This is definitely not any race of elf you've ever encountered or even recognized. Whatever he um, is, um, is, in, is in that moment, ancient. I was cast detect magic at that point. He sort of glances over at you and slowly smiles. Your magic is too low level to work on me. I'm just very intrigued. I've never met anyone who looks like you before. There are a few that have. What are you all doing in my forest? We were sent by the man who owns the bar in the village. Um, he says that there's been a gaggle of goblins, if you will, healing and making a nuisance. He sent us to look for them. He smirks over at the group of children that you met in the forest. I'm assuming those were your children. Oh yes, these are all my children. They like to play their little Can I pranks. They are the goblins that the innkeeper is struggling with. My children like to play their little pranks. A lot of them are learning or practicing their magic, and the best way to do it is to just go out into the world and learn. I keep a watchful eye on them just to make sure that they're safe, but I believe that they are the goblins that you were sent to find. Is there a way we can make a deal with him to guide his children to be less disturbing of the innkeeper? Or is there a price that we need to pay for that? The elf man just sort of throws back his head and laughs, and then gestures around. He said, do you think we need money here? I have- Want a little bit more money? The library does seem to be teeming with children, but they all appear to be well-fed, clean, happy, well-groomed, and clothed. Oh, Can we ask where their mother? Their mother? Yes, what other have that raised them? I raised them. How they're, my, children? they're my children. They were unwanted by everyone except for me. To adoption. Uh, some of them were living in abysmal conditions, in orphanages. Some of them were abandoned in the woods. My eldest daughter, he gestures over at the wood elf. My eldest daughter was offered to me as a human sacrifice. Just so a, all of these children are rescues? You know their savior? No, I'm their father. Well, why would she be offered as a sacrifice? He just sort of smirks. Religion, religious people can be radical. There are some very bad people in this world. I'm not one of them. I believe you. Can we make a deal to help out a innkeeper whose livelihood is suffering from your children's practice? I'll have a word with them. I'm just worried that he wants proof. He turns to Falana. Sure, what sort actually. of proof would a bartender accept? Is there a way I... that we can bring back an item that was stolen? Stolen? Uh, he furrows his brow and glares over at his human child. What's this about stealing? She sort of shuffles her feet guiltily. Well, you did tell us to practice our magic. Yes, but we don't steal. Stealing is wrong. Her lip trembles and she sort of shuffles out of the room. Can I ask about the magic? Well, of course. Some of my children are inclined towards magic. And one of them knows Draconic. Of course she knows Draconic. I need to learn it up. Well, you seem receptive enough. He chuckles to himself. Very well, Birdman. Come on over here and I will bestow upon you the gift of the Draconic language. <laughs> he reaches out. Very, I'm gonna one start finger like, watching it intently. And taps you right in the middle of your head. Roll a constitution check. 14. Suddenly, a rush of knowledge fills your head and you are blown back by the magical influx of information into your head and fall to the ground. Did you kill her? Yeah, she alive? I'm gonna, be I'm okay. gonna put my hand on him and pump a lay on hands in. Like, a dude, right? Point. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask the elf what his heritage is because I'm very intrigued. I've never seen an elf like him and I'd like to know what his social status is and like where he's from. Well, I'm from everywhere. I was here when the elven race was born. I was here before the birth of the elves, before the humans, before the dwarves. Mine is the most ancient of races. I have high respect for this man. I don't believe we caught your name. My children call me dad. I don't want to get adopted by you, sir. What can we call you? That is the name that I have been given. Your parents called you dad? I believe he was just here. My parents. He looks off into the middle distance, his eyes becoming foggy as he tries to remember the faces of his parents or the name that he was given. That was eons ago. I don't recall my name. You can call me dad. I'm going to ask if he started rescuing children because he became lonely. Many of my race collect things. And when I collected every book there ever has been, I passed out. Needed to start a new collection. And when my daughter was left in the woods, I decided to collect her, care for her as my own. You mentioned that mm -hmm. she was a sacrifice to you. Was that satiate some idea of who you are? There are many woods. misconceptions about my people. And unfortunately, we are often mistaken for those who are evil. I believe that this tribe of wood elves planted this child as a human sacrifice because they mistook me for someone who was evil. But in giving up their child, I didn't believe that they deserved to have her back. You're not wrong. So why do you name them after their race and not traditional names within the race? You have an excellent point. Perhaps I should allow them all to choose their own names. My son over there, that's Goresh. I believe he's an orc. You've acquired right. these children at different ages, not at infancy with all of them. Some of them I have liberated from orphanages. They were already named. Yes. I find often that uh, older children tend to already come with names. <laughs> Alana's getting very silent and kind of like inner reflective. I can give you my promise that my children will no longer harass the innkeeper or his patrons, but I can't guarantee that they won't try to spook the uh, travelers along the road. I mean, they are children. Is there anything that we can do for you while we're here? I'd very much like to add more books to my collection. My children have taken up a great deal of my time. I spend a lot of my days instructing them. I often have to duplicate myself in order to give each of them the attention that they need. My gnome child is obsessed with tinkering. I've had to instruct myself in order to teach her how to build things. I'm afraid that I have not been able to add to my book collection in at least 50 of your years or so. Now, how do we get the books to you? He sort of stares down at the table, strokes his upper lip. If you prove trustworthy, don't see why I can't provide you 
with a map of this location. How do we prove that we're trustworthy? Well, bring no harm to myself or my children, and you'll be trustworthy enough in my eyes. I start coming to My little bird heart cannot take this much excitement, so I shut off. We might need to get Rub Worm out of here before we have to go. No, anymore. I do not want to leave. I don't want to leave. I never want to leave. But Gubber, we're going to go find more books for him so that you can look at more books when you come back. I have to read these books first. That will take we, you a very long time. Before we discuss leaving, we need to talk about the innkeeper, the tavern owner. That is true. He won't just go along with our word no matter how much we believe it. We need something to prove to him or some kind of promise. And it's no disrespect to you, Dad. We will do our best to make reparations for what they have pilfered. Also, let the innkeeper know what transpired here and perhaps give him this. To Falana, he hands what appears to be a misshapen copper coin. Okay. I would roll a wisdom check to see if you know what it is. I'm just going to get up on floor. I'm just going to go to the books. 15. You can tell that it actually is made from copper. It is not in any way tarnished or oxidized. It looks like might be a scale from some sort of animal. Pull out a handkerchief and wrap it and put it back into my pouch. Thank you very much. He nods. And will also, the innkeeper know the significance? I believe he will understand my meaning. He also offers Falana a map. Thank you. Well, I must bid all of you a farewell and send you on your way. If you happen to retrieve any books for me, place them in this sack. He tosses a sack to Grub Worm. Keep this safe. Only fill yep. it with books. So add one bag of holding to your inventory. Wait, can I borrow some books? Dad sort of nods at you and hands you a tome written in Draconic. The title says Draconomicon. Over Tulip wanders over to the Orgoy. Your name's Gorish, if I heard right? Yeah, I'm Gorash. You know, I'm the only one of my friends who just teased like yours, but they're not so bad. I was wondering, do you remember much of where you were with Dad? My people were slaughtered, and I hid in a tree, and I watched them die. I'm so sorry to hear that. I think I was I don't... three years old. You, I know this is a long shot. Does the name Korik Hailsgate ring a bell? I don't think so. Who is that? My dad. Been no. looking for him for a long time. My father's name was also Gorash. Losing family members is hard. How about this? You tell me your family member's name. I'll remember them. You remember one of my family members. Don't see why not. My father's name was Gorash. Will you remember the name Ruben for me? Like the sandwich? The very same. I will remember it always. Thank you. Dad takes a sip of his drink and said, well, I think you all had better be on your way. And then he snaps his fingers and you reappear in town. I have to learn that spell. Um, same. I'm gonna fly up to the top of a tree and read my book and also look for food. You see a few chickens in a coop nearby? I can't eat them. That's cannibalism. I thought oh, you were an eagle. <laughs> those are my cousins. <laughs> are chickens also meat eaters? Chickens will eat other chickens. They, uh, took care of that goblin problem already. It's only been... Oops. Um, he looks at his wrist. I'll reach into my pocket, pick up the handkerchief and like unwrap it on the counter. Pick up the little copper coin and hand it to him. He picks it up. Where did you get this? He calls himself dad. What? In the forest we met some small green children um, who took us to their leader and he gave us this little copper coin as compensation for you um, seeing as it was his little fleet who were taking from your store. I assured oh. you that he would try to make sure it would never happen again. I believe him. Interesting. And I will take this as recompense. He did say they're going to try to return anything that was taken. Return or replace? He gazes at it again. This more than pays for what they've taken. A copper coin. It has to be more than that going to pay for everything that's gone. He just sort of smiles and he said, well, this is isn't a coin. Is it like a dragon scale? It is a dragon scale, yes. Great, dragons exist. Speaking of payment. Ah, yes. What did I say before? Was it was it 200 Eight. gold to Eight. split between a lot of you, or? That's exactly what you said, 200 gold. The bartender reaches underneath the bar, pulls out a very large bag, sets it on the counter. I'll grab it and like it put my hand underneath it like a little baby. You lift it very easily because you are strong. Do it with the And like look at everybody and like nod to the door. Say someone go get the bird, sit down at the table. You follow her. I'll go grab the baby. And Grubworm is sitting happily in a tree, cooing to himself, mumbling in his newly acquired language, feathers all fluffed. Out and happy. Can I take a pebble and like aim at the bottom, like underneath the branch, trying to get attention? I feel like it would still be an attack roll. So don't roll initiative, Dex, because it's thrown. Eleven. The pebble hits the branch that Grubworm is on, and it startles the shit out of me. Like, so I kind of like leap off the branch. Does it literally startle the shit out? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see weasel bones. <laughs> That's horrible. I'm on my knees and turn around and walk back inside. I read in this book. I know what that thing was. That was a dragon. Have I counted out though? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've come to that conclusion. Have I counted out how much is in the bag? 200 gold pieces. And there's six of us, right? I mean, technically, Vanessa is a princess and doesn't really need gold. So she gets an equal share because we all help. Whatever. I got a book. And a bag of holding. And a bag right. of holding. So I'm going to start dividing the gold. 40 for everybody. First quest completed. Let's go ahead and level everyone up to level two. I also added draconic to my languages. Excellent. Yeah, you did. Oh, that means we can speak draconic to each other. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be like, I'm taking parcel tongue. That was a, a pretty cool question to ask. 